Welcome everybody to episode 12 of Tales from the Tackle Shop and we have a guest, Mr. March himself, yeah. Cheesy Bob Fitzjohn, or as Alex likes to call him. Cheesy, it's not easy being cheesy. That's it. Or Bob Fitzjohn. No, he ain't come this year, are they? What the same. I think I've only had six tench all season. This year. Well, they are. It's been hard, isn't it? For tench. You haven't been using enough worm rigs. No, I ain't been at Benick enough. No, you can swap with me, Bob, if you wanted yeah. to. Oh, here we go. He wouldn't you about your draw again? All right, carry on. Oh, every, I, don't, I don't believe that. Bob, every week. I don't believe that. You don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, the, res the results are going to be interesting this week after the Arctic conditions have kind of descended upon the fens, but uh, we'll get on to that later. We'll be picking Bob's brains of all things March, March related March. and how the cheese trade's going. That's going all right. Is it? Christmas is nearly here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any bargains? No, yeah, there's always bargains on my store. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Talking of bargains, uh, pushing it again, yeah. Is that the same one or is it a different one? No, it's the same one. And look, I've, I've ruined the top, so I put my hand over it. So hook me up in our boxes if you, um, all you all rounders out there, or lower anglers who need to buy a Christmas present, hook me up. Lure box is a yearly lure subscription but you can get one off boxes which would be ideal for Christmas so don't forget those is there any icebreaker lures in there <sighs> you, I've got some brilliant videos no. of you lot chucking lumps of lead about <laughs> get on that to a minute because while I remember and you can't see me but it's the hoodies as well um, available through Alex Tackle Shop they're really the, comfortable actually if, like I say I haven't got mine on tonight because I've had it on a week it started to walk did it yeah it was just moulded I just like, got into it like that so, again brilliant Christmas presents and they are selling fast so we didn't have many made we had about 25-30 made in lots of different sizes so give Alex a bell if you want one of those for a Christmas present or hint to your better half about a present that you might want for Christmas and if you're lucky you might get a bit of cheese for, no you won't get a bit of cheese mm -hmm. thrown in but uh, <laughs> nah pork pie pork pie pork pie pork pie that'll be the week out of Christmas what I have left <laughs> And the vouchers. Yeah, gift vouchers. Yeah, that'd yeah. be the last week though, wouldn't it? If I had today, good job, it is Christmas today, I tell you. All I've done is gift vouchers all yeah. day. Is it? Yeah. yeah it's, been, it's been horrendous. Because oh, you have to redeem them as well, don't you? So yeah, what, so what you go, it? oh look, I'm really busy, and you just think, ah, yeah. gift vouchers. Yeah. Then you'll have a day in January where all you get is vouchers and you don't take a penny. <laughs> yeah. you've, already, you've already had the money and spent it. Bob knows. That's the worst thing about vouchers, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I don't know, I was talking to someone else last week, a completely different trade about it, and they said vouchers as well. I can't, it'll come to me in about 10 minutes' time. Right, where do you want to start off, mate? Do you want to start off with a little video that we got? Yeah, if you want. Do you want to explain what was happening? Which video is this? Oof. The special one you said. No, no, not that one. The one of oh. the, the couriers. Oh, what, the gobber yeah. getting uh, his starter? Yeah. Yeah, so we got him good good and proper, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we did. So, obviously, Rob Wright won the Chip Shop Award last week, and he's avoided me all week. Well, he was avoiding me. He thought he'd avoided uh. me. And I'd heard on the grapevine that people were having their uh, Christmas party. For the Whittlesey Curry House, which I, I tend to go in there a little bit. A little bit? <clears throat> yeah, and uh, not that we send each other Christmas cards or anything, but um, <clears throat> I thought, what better way to get gobber? So I've managed to sneak a chip shop t-shirt into the curry house, and um, I know one of the waiters there, bit plop, flip flop, whatever you want to call him, and uh, he donated the t-shirt when he brought the starters out. So you can imagine, obviously you'll see with the video as well, and um, we got him hook, line, and sinker. So he thought he was avoiding me, but he can't <laughs> yeah, avoid that's me. That's what I say. Nobody will avoid it. No. So, uh, we'll yeah. stick it in about now. <laughs> <laughs> that's and you sent me a picture as well, didn't you? Yeah. Do you want to mention that? Oh, well, Caster Blaster. Yeah. Again, he was avoiding me. He says, oh, I weren't avoiding you. I weren't. You were avoiding me. And he took it well, actually. Caster Blaster is? He's John Payne. Yeah. Didn't you send me a picture of Eddie Stokes, though, as well? 
No, that was the week before that one. Oh, right. I'm getting them all mixed up. You are? Yeah. You were filming Andy Stokes this I, week. I know, that's why it's in the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, there's a picture of Caster Blaster. Um, he's one of these who can give it but can't take it. He's one of them. Right, yeah. yeah. So we'll, st- we'll make him famous as well about, yeah. about now. Stick his picture up there somewhere. He'll love that. No, AD I used on the thumbnail, didn't I, with you yes, last week? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, yesterday, at the very warm Benick. <laughs> God, it's warm, it's, yeah. Tropical. I'm because you've got to bear in mind. I don't know many of you match anglers really because uh, I just it's, I'm not part of the scene of match fishing. Yeah, so I, fishing, so I just don't know people's names. So I'm trying to learn as I go along with the old camera and try and get to know people. So I'm talking to this guy on peg one as God is on peg two mm-hmm. at Benick in A section, and uh, I said to him, "I have to remind me of your name." I forgot. He went, "It's Aidy Aidy Stokes." I went, "Oh God." Of course it is, but everyone's got their hats on, mm. all their clobber, and all you can see is it's like eyes. It's like this bit. And uh, yeah, if people don't remind me, if I don't see, I said to her, I didn't recognise you all your clothes on, which obviously was a bit weird than me <laughs> saying that. But um, yeah, so it was, it was, I was a bit embarrassed really, because obviously it was only the week before that I stuck his picture on the thumbnail. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's just funny with uh, everyone with their clobber on, they look completely different Completely. Yesterday. And the best bit I liked was, you'll see it on the video that I'm going to put out on Friday, um, you lot were pushing your trolleys up that path mm. from the farmer's car park. Yeah. And it, it looked like a war film <laughs> <laughs> when you're waving off the guys from the trenches into the, into the fields, <laughs> like First World yeah. War, war film. I did it in slow-mo. I got this stuff on slow-mo and I got uh, Josh, Josh Pace perfectly. As he went past the camera, he gave it the old... <laughs> and you'll see it on the video. But you just think, I waved them off into the fog, never to see them again. No. no. It was the ground hard, though, was it? Oh, it was rock hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've been there when it's like that, and we've had to pull each other's trolleys because of the mud. Wow. Yeah. We'll Honestly. Yeah. yeah. It was Literally cr- help each other to get through like the mud. It's like minute. Yeah. 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 Especially when it's when hard, it ain't too bad. Yeah. It was rock but hard. I've been there when that's been muddy, and you've had to help each other. You couldn't push it. You couldn't push your trolley. You yeah. had to help each other to get through the mud. But it was really weird, because you can only <clears> see about three or four pegs. <laughs> and yeah. you can hear this... K-doosh. And, the, yeah. and then the, the ice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was echoing because of the amazing, fog. Isn't it? How yeah, you it, even get a bite, really. Yeah, that was incredible. Straight away, isn't it, and all. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Those yeah. poor fish must be like. A... But I've never seen so many different types of ice breakers I did yesterday. I'm real with it. And I was only in up Mark section. I like food pegs, but they were drain rods going out. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I had a set of them. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll stick a couple of them. Um, Clips in here. I don't need to go right over because it's uh, that shallow over there. Just want to get a little bit further on that other side. Good shot. Because there were, so I, yeah. I was videoing one or two of the guys, and that, it was um, quite funny. So they were quite happy doing it until I turned up with the camera. And of course, then they were like, Oh, I better not mess up. And the next peg to me, he lives on the river, Steve Smith, turns up no icebreaker. He, he never had an icebreaker. No. Yeah. Fair weather angler. Yeah. 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 Well, he lives on the river, he see what it was like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he didn't think it'd be that hard, he said. AD, I don't want to embarrass him, but he did chuck it out at one point and it slipped, the, the loop slipped off his wrist or he let go of it mm. with of a mm. hand. So the icebreaker went out, went through the ice and the rope followed. <laughs> I think quite a few people did that. Yeah. And the rope was all think, like, right on top of it. I think a few people ice. have chucked it out and the rope's gone one way and the lead's gone the opposite way <laughs> into the far bank. <laughs> yeah. So what he had to do was get his landing net pole. I think he had a little weed rake on the end of it. Mm. Grabbed the edge of the rope, and yeah. obviously, because it was all on top of the eye, it was quite funny. But mm. the handy bit about d- down there is you could actually go over the bridge and break the ice from the far bank. Yeah. If you went too far down. So I'm not sure on the rule on that. Can you do that? I don't know. It's new and on me, <laughs> you know. 
Common sense, know. though, isn't it? Well, yeah, we said that as a team, but we weren't sure whether we were allowed to do it or not. But it'd be interested to know if you were allowed to go the other side. Yeah. I can't see why not, really. Well, you know, if Ex we did it, someone would moan. So Extreme conditions? You, I don't know. That's what I would have done. But then again, yeah, is, yeah. It, is it in the rules or not? Who knows? But mm. uh, yeah, interesting stuff. So yesterday was a... We'll get on to that later. I think we all enjoy it, really, don't we? We're like little kids. We just love chucking stuff. Just what I thought. We're just like little kids, like, yeah, you know. And everybody would love to... Love doing it. And everyone's like, well, that's enough. Oh, a little bit more. A <laughs> little bit more. I'm just saying, I can get carried away when I'm cutting swims, raking swims. Mm. I, I can go down at night and just enjoy myself raking eight or nine swims there. Just, you know, with the nature and everything. Yeah. And, I'll tell you what was interesting as well, yes. I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to embarrass them, but there were one or two anglers that didn't have icebreakers that borrowed them off other guys. And they were very conscientious. They didn't use them for too long. Mm -hmm. And they didn't actually get their pegs sorted. Yeah. As well as they could have done yeah. if they had their own. And that was interesting watching. It was kind of like, because it was a one-off mm. and very different um, weather conditions. And it, it completely <clears throat> threw a few people, didn't mm. it? And you can see it unsettled them a little bit. There's quite a lot of sort of thinking behind the way you break the ice as well. It's tactical, yeah. isn't it? You know, some teams did it one way, other teams did it another. You know, <clears throat> in some areas where perhaps there's not so many fish, a smaller hole is better. In areas where there's more fish, like where I was, bung hole again, um, I thought I'd break a bigger hole because I knew, I felt there'd be fish there. So I, mm. I'd dig a, dug a bigger, so I could get two lines in where I wanted to be and... I could fish it like it was a normal match, but when that boat come through at about half twelve, I think someone said it sounds like the Germans are coming. Yeah. It was like <laughs> you, come... you could hear it about five minutes away. Unbelievable! How to knacker your boat going through that lot? Incredible! He made me laugh because you come by me up here on the knee, and he was going a good stroke. So I said, "All right, mate." I said, "I know it's easy." I said, "But you could slow down a bit. You can see there's a little match on." I've got to get through the ice. I said, well, we've got through it. I said, I'm pretty sure that will. Yeah, mm. yeah but you were coming through full board. You were in a real big barge, didn't you, come through? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had like a little day boat type. Thing. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought we'd got that same one what come through here. I thought he'd no. reached you. No, no, oh, it was like a boat. white... Um, what, a fiberglass boat or something? Yeah, like, we obviously had all the... What do you call it? A cuddy or something like yeah, that? Yeah, cuddy. Yeah. yeah, he had like a generator on the front. He just went straight through, mate. He did. It did say, Uncle, you could hear it coming from a long way with the boat coming. I'll tell you what I saw as well, which I've never seen before. As I walked back from AD and Godders back to the car park. Cool, that's a long walk. You didn't go very far, did you? <laughs> <laughs> what, Godders Big Two? Yeah, that's in the car park. Actually, I know I parked at the church. Oh, sorry. I had at least a 200 metre walk. I had to go over the bridge. Yeah. I saw a pike strike under the ice. Yeah. And actually, yeah. the ice cracked and went. Mm. And I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Oh, it's been, weird. Oh, I have yeah. fish when there's ice, where I've seen a little fish jump out and land on the ice. To get away yeah. from it. Yeah. Or, you know, land literally on the ice. Crazy. I'm sure yeah. one of the coots was stuck on the ice. It looked like it was at one point. Mm. Just like, mm. I don't know. But that was strange. We will get onto this later because it was very extreme conditions, which will explain mm. in more details. Um, I am going to mention one guy I said, Ernest, where's my mate Ernest? I'm going to take a, a video for you, Ernest. Ernest wasn't happy with the lighting last week. So I don't think some people realise what bizarre things we do on the podcast. Or you do. It is that I turn my I house... I can't look that way because I get blinded. I turn my house into some kind of like production studio. <laughs> but Ernest, look, <laughs> we are trying our best to get it as light as possible when getting rid of the shadows, but it's not easy. So what I now need from you is um, a couple of diffusion boxes, please, to go on these lights. So if you could buy me that as a Christmas present, that would be perfect. Yeah. And then we can have a slightly softer light. Getting more heat off them than off the rain. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, my electricity bill is like going through the roof. But uh, we, every week we have these lights on now to try and uh, 
I don't know, get it better. But they're, there's, they're the only perfect answer is for Alex to build me a podcast studio, Cheesy. And that's it. At Piddly. You've got bloody room there, haven't you? They've got loads yeah, of room. Yeah, yeah, loads of room. And money. Yeah. Richest tackle dealer in the country. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's I've got many the, days like today, you won't. I've got the richest tackle dealer and the, the richest cheese merchant with me tonight. That's it. I went past the market last Saturday, right? Uh-huh. And I went, where are the cheesies? Um, trailer the trailer's there, not there. I'm thinking, where is he? But you were in Benidorm. I was in Benidorm. I had people ringing me up asking me if I was all right. <laughs> They've never <laughs> known me to have a Saturday off. <laughs> the last Saturday I had off would have been a Christmas day. I cannot remember having a Saturday well, off, you know, yeah. How apart from like Christmas Day, but this year I had to take her indoors on holidays. First time she's oh, been on holiday. Her fault, she, is it? Yeah. No, seriously, she didn't yeah. fly before. How was Benidorm? Yeah, yeah. How lovely, was it? yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah, a bit better than yesterday on the old knee. You've got a good turn. Yeah, I'll tap. <laughs> yeah, not in them bars, you know. I was going to say. No. Get a better tan off these lights. <laughs> no, she enjoyed it. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm. I'm I just... sat there thinking yesterday in minus two. This time last week, I was walking along the prom at Benidorm in sort of 20 degrees, you know. Minus two? Where were you yesterday? Well, it well, wasn't minus two, it was minus five. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I had a little fire next to uh, me, right. we didn't, I had my heater there. <laughs> Old tackle dealer here, right? That is. Mm. Couldn't light it. Huh? It lit, but then went off after five minutes. It won't Mine go does, it won't go. I don't know if you've got the same sort as I've got. Yeah, it, the gas gets too cold, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Goes all like jelly in the yeah, bottom. Yeah, start get it, don't you? And then all of a sudden it just... Yeah. I, I don't wish to embarrass anybody, right? But while I was doing my long walk to Peg 1 and 2 on that yeah, section, yeah, right? Yeah. I, did te- I did look over to the car park and I did see somebody light a hand warmer. No. And it went up like the towery inferno. No, <laughs> and they were holding it going... Then they dropped it on the floor and tried to stamp on it. Oh, I was giggling. I won't mention any names. But he has got a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so... There's only a select few that have a T-shirt, and he did have a problem with his hand warmer yesterday, but it did make me giggle. He must be from Fish for Peterborough, then. I can't say. Oh. No, no, I can't <laughs> say. Uh, they do have a nice carrot cake in Peterborough, though. So, do they? Yeah. Oh, I never got any. No, it's because you're the enemy. Yeah. I'm, like, unbiased in the middle. Definitely, yeah, yesterday, I was just saying. Yeah. 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 Right, um, let's crack on, because we've got Cheesy here, so uh, Alex will explain more, but Cheesy, you do everything for March, don't you? So, Alex, how long have you known Cheesy? Uh, well, since I was about seven, I suppose, when I fished the junior matches. Um, Bob used to run them. Gav used to give you a little bit of help, but no one else really. He used to more just turn up for, I don't know what he used to turn up for, really. No, <laughs> no. He used to be there, and then, um, and then obviously fish for the March club matches, and then... Yeah, I've known Bob since I was seven, so a long, long time. A long time, really. 25 years? 26 years? Uh, 25 years, yeah. yeah. Good maths there. Quick maths. Yeah, so Bob, you do, are you, you're not the chairman of Marching District, but you are, but you're basically... Well, he's everything. the chairman, everything. the treasurer, <laughs> the bailiff, yeah. he's everything. When I fill a form in, my wife's the treasurer, I'm the <laughs> secretary, <laughs> Gavin, something else. How long have you been involved in Marching District, would you say? Forty odd year old. Well, wow! It, it was March Working Men's Club when I was first member. Mm. Then it went to March and District Angling Association. I took over from the late John Abbott, really. Cool. Yeah, forty years. Yeah, and this is what I think we're trying to get across on the podcast. Really, is that um, there are so many people who do so many things for angling clubs, and without people doing all this hard work for a consistently long period of time, a lot of the things wouldn't happen, would they? So. That's amazing, really. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially this river. You know, it's 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 got to be one of the hardest to run a match on in the country because mm. it's with it being free fishing. You know what I mean? And the parking. Yeah. And no the, permanent pegs. You can't just go and say nobody on here today because you can't just say, "Oh, let's all put hundred platforms all in yeah, a row." No. And... Platforms and that are supposed to be going in. Car parks are supposed to be going in. But this has been going on for four, four or five years now, you know. Well, let's go back to the platforms, because that's quite interesting. So explain to everybody what's, what is happening with that, because there is a plan of foot, isn't there? Yeah, there's a plan. Middle level have um, approved it. I've got planning permission. Middle as such. level have got them now, from what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, and they have posts to have them down the yard. The environmental agency give them so many. 
Air Club was going to, what well, will do, put money into it. Um, they're these hard plastic, what they make out of plastic now, you know. Oh, they're them ones, Yeah, they're they? them oh, ones, right. yeah. Not wood or anything, these hard, rock hard, they make benches and everything. Just hope they put them low enough not to Yes, buy. yeah, well, that's that's hopefully Kai or we'll be along board. If it does go nothing. ahead, they're sort of hopefully going from behind the swimming pool to the allotments, where the banks are real bad, and the same at Wigson's Bridge, from the culvert, what we call the culvert, to the disabled <coughs> pegs. How many platforms are you aiming to get in? Well, we're looking at 30 or 40. Wow. In total? Yeah. And then there'll be odd places where we can perhaps buy one or two more and put in out of the way, you know. Mm. Yeah. Cause I know you've been working on this for yeah. four or five years. Yeah. Then COVID come in. Ah, uh, of course it did, you know, yeah. Mess yeah. that up. Yeah. That was, that was when it was going ahead, before COVID come. Because I had a meeting with the council on the riverbanks with Coy and... Why have you then COVID come in? Well, you couldn't get an answer out of the council. Well, you still can't, you know. Yeah. So, hope. What do you reckon they might go in in the close season? I hope so. I don't think they will. I can't see it but because of the time of year for nesting birds yeah. and stuff. Of like course. That. Yeah. yeah. If it goes in, it'll be like now. This time of year. I'm so Kai said. I'm just waiting for some paperwork to come to us. For the fishing rights. The council wanted X amount of money, but we got that half to what they wanted, you know. And, well, it won't be the fishing rights. Well, it is the fishing rights, but it will still be sort of free fishing, but I think you'll have to have sort of a pound membership for March, and if you come from away, hopefully we'll be able to charge you for a day to you or something. Oh, right, know, okay. On that basis. That's a good idea. Well, yeah. that'd be good, because yeah. you can then say we can, Yeah. you're paying that money, we can put yeah. the platforms If you're in a P15s or... Yeah. So that's how I'm hopefully going to work it, because we don't want to pay all this money and you, you ain't making nothing out on it. You know but what also I mean? Also, you can reinvest I mean, we ain't doing money. there to make money out on it, but it's just to improve... Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the council wants, to improve the area, isn't it? You know, for everything. Mm. Good and idea. I still say it, and... Fishing brings more money into March than any of anything else. When Alex first mentioned this to me, yeah. eight years when we first started in the podcast, yeah. I kind of went, <clears throat> I kind of in my head went, yeah, yeah. Mm. But now, over the last three or four years, haven't yeah, seen you know, it. Yeah, you go up town from April through to October, you'll have a job to get bed on at the weekend. Yeah. And there's that many come now, a lot come in the week, Monday to Friday, because they cannot get in at weekends. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I have to, yeah. when they're booking matches, yeah. I have to go around when they can book the accommodation, yeah. not yeah. not when they, they're they like, what about, this? I'll come back to you, like three or four times, the, the chairman or whatever comes back to you, and you like, try and arrange I had a month ago ringing me, some of them what are qualified for the final on here, so they can get a hotel here, yeah. or, you know, a bed. Yeah. So what we're talking, weekend, we're yeah. talking about anglers in the summer mm. fishing uh, the commercials and also yeah. the drains, yeah. and they're staying at the B and Bs and the, yeah, and there's, so that we stop you, everywhere, Griffin, <coughs> all the <coughs> well, well, they don't care, you know, uh, Weatherspoons, um, Wood Paddock, is it down yeah. the Creek? Wherever they can get a bed, yeah. And now, especially after, uh, well, we talk, we're going to talk about the Christmas open in a minute, but also. After Christmas, with the looking forward to the Winter League final, yeah. they, they come down and practice for that, and they'll fish the opens to get practice on the river. Plus, you got the pike fishing as well. Don't forget that's always that heritage yeah. isn't as big as the the match and match side of things. But there is a lot of pike anglers travel down this area. God, they must be struggling to come well, down here. <laughs> yeah. Well, they always did. I mean, yeah. when I worked at Millview, there was always loads of pike anglers. We around. take more money on sort of day tickets and that on. Pike anglers and what we do through the summer months, you know. Yeah. Then what fish in the summer are sort of locals out of the Especially brewery. Especially when yeah. you've got the pike final, there's yeah. normally a lot come down then, isn't there? Yeah, well, yeah, it's uh, having thought about it and actually now witness how many people fish like the Winter League, for example, mm. you kind of, and they're more locals, but obviously these matches are going on with other people coming from all over the place. It is, it's like a little um, industry, isn't there? That's, mm. that's actually... Getting a lot of winter <coughs> trade on top of their normal yeah, summer I mean, trade. I'll see them like on a Saturday morning. They'll all come walk through town. They'll all go to the local shops, come back with bags of drink or food and that. You know, so it's oh, not think, just the pubs. I think that and, chip shop near the um, yeah, and then you calf chip shops and that's, all that. That's obviously yeah. Saturday night. It's full yeah. of yeah, Sheffield. Which one's that? One next on this ship. The one nearest. Um, no, not stops. No, the you're next right, one. near the causeway. Yeah, right, there. Next, I only ever see fishermen in there, no locals. Yeah, we see the trouble is where they stop at 
the guest well, house. They yeah. don't do evening meals, you see. They all the rose and crayon get, get a lot in and do all. Do they? Because that's yeah. the nearest one to them, you know. Well, yeah. even you lot, uh, like, try, when there's a match here, you, you go to the Spoons, don't you, for breakfast? So you're, mm. they're waiting. Oh, yeah, massive. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just it's simple things like that, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's incredible, really, and it's it's you, yeah. People who don't see it won't realise it because no. I, I didn't, and I, I have a bit more connection with the angling community than people that don't fish. But now I've spent a bit of time looking. You do you think this is see, a, lot, it's a lot of money? I ain't got nothing against boaters. You know, they come into March, come through March, they try and make everything nice for them, landing state, all this. All they do is not being funny. They pull up outside the ship along there. You'll go up there Saturday afternoon. They're all sitting on the boats, drinking their wine, drinking the beer. They ain't buying it from here. They're bringing it with them, but yeah. just using that as a stopping off place. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, there isn't many not, that go up that bank and go into the ship. They're not bringing no. nothing to the town, are no, they? No, no. Yet the council, I think, are bending over backwards to look after them more than what they are fishermen, you know. I think it's a case of what they don't see, they don't understand. no. Because, like I said, I didn't really understand it. And I think you have, right. have to keep banging home the point. And I think they have to, they have to see a Sunday morning to actually understand yeah. it. Yeah. When you see how many people are involved in these matches... You I, mean, I think Jan French, I'm getting her on board. I think she realises what it is. Because when I, I put a new post up to, and we couldn't park down what we call the allotments. Um, and I said to her about it, I said, that's another parking place for us. I said, they're all going to have to park on the road now. Why, she said. I said, well, they put a post up, you know, key in that. Don't worry, she said, there'll be a key in next week for you. And there was. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I see they've put a sign up now saying, no parking, access road. No. Yeah, but that, what, just until there's yeah. a, an open on, yeah. Because yeah. um, you have, and that's the thing, you're, you're very good at working with different people. So you're obviously trying to be a bit of a peacemaker as well, aren't you? Sort of, you have to be, don't yeah. you? Mm-hmm. And yeah, not, it's like Dan Swiss. Swallow away in that, innit? We had trouble down there with park. Well, I'll go down there now, Sunday morning at six, and put cones out where they can't park. And someone said to me, because I collected them up one afternoon, they said, do you put them cones up? I went, yeah. You know, why? I said, well, we got that much hassle off you lot parking where you shouldn't. So I have to go down there now and put cones out. So you know, and then the, go and pick them up again. You know, hopefully the residents just, appreciate this. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I had one put his hand up the other day because he had a bit of trouble... <laughs> They weren't parked on his drop curb, but he'd also got a bit what was gravel where he parked on, but it weren't a drop curb, and of course they parked there, and of course he couldn't go on that bit. Yeah, yeah. I think he had a bit of an argument with somebody. So now I put a cur- uh, cone on his bit, so he put his thumbs up the other Sunday morning when I put yeah. it on there. I mean, a lot of the local-ish people know where to park, but people yeah. coming from away, they're, that is they're, a trouble, you they're not sure where they're going in the morning, and they're just panic a little bit oh I'll just park here or whatever don't they and that's that's the problem isn't the trouble it? is on, with fishermen a lot of it is they do make a rod for their own back where park they want to be as near to their yeah. peg as they can don't they not yeah, being funny you oh, know instead of thinking about it and go well I'll park it's only a matter of under jars they've all got trolleys so it don't I can't remember who I was talking to but it's yesterday morning and five are alls yes. what is an all? I don't know do you know no. what no it's that's been that all the years I've known it so anyway, so if anyone commenting, guys, what is an all? Because we went to the five alls yesterday yeah. morning at Benick, and I can't remember who I was talking to, but we were talking about the match. I think it's a shame we can't have more at March. And that, what they were saying is about the, we were talking about what you have to deal with, cheesy. Mm. And they were really these guys were great. They said, you know, most of the anglers are brilliant, but it, one or two mm. just can't be quiet at first thing in the morning, yeah. and they have to scream yeah. and shout at each other from wherever they park. And if you're in a residential area. You don't want to be waking people up at eight o'clock on a Sunday morning because it's just going to get their backs up straight mm. away, isn't it? And uh, I think the important message here is that most of the anglers are brilliant most of the time, aren't they? Yet you only get one or two that mm. they don't consider what their actions are doing just to spoil it for everyone else. And then someone like you who is running uh, the local angling club has to spend all their time being the peacemaker between the anglers, the residents. And, I mean, we'll talk about pegging out in a minute, but, I mean, that's... an Putting the cones out is something you really don't want to be doing, but you do it to mm. try and keep the yeah. peace for everybody. It's not permanently pegged, is it? No, that's it. So that's kind of because the other thing is, obviously, I was doing these videos for the Winter League, and obviously, I was focusing on the organisers like Mike, Caroline, Fizz, all the guys, Bobby Bates, all the, all the organisers behind it. And then I thought, bugger me, 
It's freezing cold. Cheesy's been out. Yeah, well, they're sitting in that room doing all the paperwork, <laughs> you know, in the walk. Cheesy <laughs> walking up and down his bank in the dark, getting Still approached pissed. for people. <laughs> you know. So, because this, what, this people. is what people need to know. You're not only organising the local angling club, but you're, you're actually pegging. It's peacemaker as well. You're pegging out the matches as well. Yeah. So, how do you find time to do that? Well, I've, <laughs> I've done it for so many years. I meant this the whole of the Nino and Peg out in an hour. But you do it in the dark. Yeah, yeah do it in the dark. Because if I've done it in daylight, all the numbers would be gone for the morning. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. So you go on a Friday, uh, a Saturday, Saturday night? Saturday night when I finish work. Yeah, or, or Sunday morning. Get up early. Just all depends what I've got on Saturday night. I pegged mm-hmm. out Saturday night because I went to a do on Saturday night. I left the bras at half past one. Saturday night, and I was back in there. <laughs> Five o'clock. <laughs> No, I didn't have to go up there in the morning, did I? No. Come on, you, you were telling yeah, us when you first got here, so recently you've had a few encounters, haven't you? Oh, <laughs> this year, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was by the health centre bridge, and I'm going in, this is dark, I'm going in and out of the bushes, got to put the numbers halfway down the bank, because if not, they'll disappear. And I see this old boy, and this, they were sitting on the bench, and two of them come walking down. I said, What are you doing, mate? I said, Sort of just sorting out the swims. I didn't say I was putting the pegs out because I thought if I put the pegs out, the whole. Mm. Oh, that's all right, they said. They said, we thought you were some kind of weirdo going in and out of the bushes. <laughs> Did you say, well, yeah, I'm one of them. Which I most probably look like it, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, walking along through the bushes at that top and night. Can you imagine spout pegging out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, then I got a bit further down, nearer towards the bypass. <laughs> In what are called a long swim. Which what you're a weirdo. In the middle of nowhere, isn't it? In the middle of nowhere, this is, towards the bypass. And I see these light, this light in the bushes. So I said, what are you up to, mate? Are you fishing? They went, no, we're smoking. I said, carry on then. I'll leave you alone. Yeah. They were down there. I suppose they're down the joint or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Carry on, I said. Oh, yeah. how funny. But you've got to have that attitude to it. It's amazing, really, because... Uh, and I had another woman, a girl, I don't know what you'd be, 30, she approached me by the allotments, what are you doing? So I sort of explained what I was doing, oh she said I used to live here and got talking, so I left it at that, carried on pegging it, come back, she was on the bench with a bottle of wine in her, <laughs> like this, honestly. <laughs> you yeah. attract them all, don't you? Yeah. yeah she was I'm surprised you didn't join yeah. in with us, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't like wine. No. <laughs> it's no. crazy, yeah. So, just like, God, can you imagine if these platforms went in and these permanent pegs, at least half, well, a, th- a, quarter, a third of the match would be yeah, it wouldn't be the same, would it, for me? What, what, what would, would you do? You? No, that's it. <laughs> You'd have an extra hour in bed, wouldn't you? Yeah. And everyone behaved themselves hey, it would parking. be handy in place, so. Yeah, yeah it would. Who would I feel sorry for? You? Well, I'd help him, John Price. Oh, that's a peg, isn't it? That is a peg. It, you couldn't have got a worse bloke <laughs> in the worst peg, really, because he's a big old boy, isn't he? And short. <laughs> well, his little legs wouldn't reach the steps. And yeah. What else? Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> Poor I, old Pricey. I've dug the food, like, so you can get it your It is leg. like that. But, yeah, he can't... He Once you get, get down, it's yeah. like that. Yeah. It's rock it's hard, that it. deep, like, yeah. as, from me to there away. Yeah. But it's a sheer drop. drop Where was he? Which peg? We're on the end of the turning bay. Oh, right, yeah. Not Just the first, end peg. No, not the first one in the turning bay. Second one out of it. So towards the bridge or towards... Towards one above it. There's okay. like some lilies yeah. on the far yeah. bank. Yeah, yeah where, where mate, you used to have all them boats. Yeah. Because yeah. I think he's ill, that man now. What, the guy with the cro- uh, crocodile shoes? That's it, yeah. and all that, yeah. yeah. I think he's in a home now. Is he? Yeah, so I was told. Yeah. Mm. He's got some nice dogs that used to come running down the bank while he's going to pass them a boat. Yeah. No, that's the next guy along, isn't Yeah, it? that's the next mm-hmm. bit along. He's still got them. He comes mm-hmm. over on the boat, don't he? Yeah. That one. Now I'm on about the one a bit further. <coughs> ah, right. So, <laughs> Pricey, bless him. He, yeah. no, he was a bit quiet last night in the curry house, wasn't he? He looked like an eye robot, didn't he? All you could see was this blue light underneath his thing and like his coat everywhere all over here. Of course, he got on, he had obviously a heated jacket and the blue button. Oh, yeah. Like, and he looked like I was just going to press it and he'd just go, hmm. <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> Not Robocop, but Iron Man. Yeah. Just touch it and turn him off. Uh, so you got him out anyway? Yeah, yes. Well, that was to weigh him in, to get his keep net up, you see. He got in to get his keep net, when he couldn't get back up with his keep net. <laughs> it's part, who else, again, I was, again, I was talking to somebody else yesterday, I'm getting old, I can't remember. And they were saying that March being really problematical, not the ideal area to have all these matches. 
But then we agreed that it's actually, that's part of it. It's managing yourself so, mm. you, so you can get your kit in and you can, you can actually work out how to get the best from that swim. Because it's not, it's not a sterile, platformy environment, is it? You've got to kind of, you might have to use a bit of rope to get down. You've got to yeah. get, manage all your gear down. Well, two or three of Mark 1's lot, they got, they, they got an aluminium ladder up into five. When well, you think there's no weight in it, is there? Put it on top of your trolley. If you know where pigs you go, it's ideal, isn't it? Yeah, mm. let's share it. Have you know, John, John Price could have done with it yesterday anyway. Mm. You know? Oh, we John. Right. Bless him. No, but, but the funniest thing I see yesterday was, um, I think it was Steve Smith again, he was next to me. He pulled his keep net all the way out, waiting for the way in, and just left the bottom ring or so in. They started at yon end of his section. Well, by the time they got to his, his, his net, they couldn't... It was, <laughs> no, it was stiff. It was a, it just stood like that. You know, because it frozen. So he couldn't squash it down to get the fish out, so we had to roll them all uh, the way. We, it was, it was yeah. a job in our section yeah. to weigh in as well. Yeah. <laughs> so you need, yeah. like, someone to stand there yeah. on it. You can imagine, that's what he did. He pulled his net out, you see. Well, it was all wet, it froze straight away. Of course, when he went to get it to weigh in, when it folded, I couldn't fold it up. When you mention Steve Smith, I always think of two weeks ago when he had 36 pounds yeah. and come six in his yeah. section, is that mm. right? Yeah. And He's always at March as well, isn't he? I had a brilliant day. Yeah. 36 pounds. It's amazing, isn't it? He comes six in the section. That's crazy weights. Mm. But no, it's good. So um, where did you draw yesterday, Bob? I was at March. Uh, just I was a five above the turning bay. H. H1. H2. H2. Steve was on H1. I was H2. Is there any swim on this stretch that you haven't fished? I would, I would, I would have thought I'd been in most on it at one time yeah. or another. <laughs> you know, there is one or two I haven't, mm. but they yeah. put an extra one or two in this Sunday. Oh, it's when we come to the Christmas. Oh, yeah, you can explain that in a minute, are you? Cool, yeah. cool. I found another little place to sneak two in. That's oh, yeah. Yeah, they cut them trees down beyond the toilets, didn't they? Have they cut them down there? Yeah, I'm going to put two in beyond the toilets. Bark or it behind your peg there. Oh, I'll have one of them. Yeah, well, that's what I said to you. That'd be ideal. On this, on this side? Yeah, stick two on there. Will you they cut all them big trees down, so you can look when you stand on the bridge. What so you're actually it was. fishing opposite the old mill? Yeah, yeah. Opposite so they're the mill shot. pegs. They're, the, they're, yeah. they're the mill pegs. We call that hepatitis corner. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> yeah, 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 it is, yeah. yeah. But it's a lovely bit of bank and everything. And what they've done, they cut the trees down so people could stand on the bridge and look down the river. Because the trees used to block all the... Uh, yeah. They've yeah. done it for this town regeneration thing, hasn't they done? What about yeah. our mate still on his boat opposite that, though? Are they ever going to move him? Or? I don't think so. He's been there three years. Three years, yeah. Not moved? No. You know the one on the big Moved all the concrete. others, didn't they? But yeah, they... but he's still there, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, they don't move him for some reason. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Right, let's change tack slightly. Alex, you brought some goodies in. Well, not many. <coughs> I was going to come on to it when uh, Bob was on about nets being frozen. I used one of these on Sunday, and it was fixed in sort of that shape, frozen solid. So when I was netting a fish... the the fish, I was like trying to balance the fish not coming out of the net, it was horrendous. But the idea of these is it, it doesn't, it's not, it, not not knotted, it's barb friendly. So when you're catching a load of roach, especially when you're fishing emp, you're kind of getting caught in the net. You know, you see people cutting the holes in the net where they have to keep cutting it and it keeps getting caught. So yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, yeah, so the new natural nets. What do you reckon that cheesy? Looks good to me. So, when yeah. I first see it, I thought it was one of them rubber ones when you were there. No, like, no, no. No, it's one of them barb safe ones. Yeah. Natural nets. I'm going to throw a little fly in the ointment. Mm -hmm. If you were hemp fishing, that mesh is so small, would you not? Would it not be a problem with the hemp that you've already got any hook going through? Hemp would have come off anyway. Oh, right, okay. Well, unless you're pinning it. Oh, this is a bit I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to come back mm. to that at some point. That's another day. Yeah. So it's a, a But does that freeze, though? It does freeze when it's full of water, yeah. Oh, yeah, you were saying. A bit, like, a bit like everyone was fishing a flick tip yesterday. Yeah. I reckon I wasted 10 minutes of my match trying to get my elastic back in my pole. In the end, I just give up. Well, that's why I never even set a pole up. It was better when you had that much frozen out and then you was just playing it on that. Yeah. That was the best thing. Yeah. Well, you're on a whip as well, were you? I just fish whip all day. <laughs> Makes sense. If the bad angling yeah. police had been about yesterday, <coughs> they'd have had a field day, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. 
I got, God was showing me his. It was just like the same. And it was all tangled at the bottom. Oh. Yeah, it was just like horrible. Horrendous. Well, I looked at, like I say, Steve next door to me. I looked at his and it sort of went down and then had a kink in it and went down a bit <laughs> like that. And it didn't lay flat. No. It was literally frozen yeah. in different yeah. shapes. Chrissy Linwright, I, he, was, he, he wasn't enjoying it. It was cold. He was like fed up. He goes, Andy, I haven't enjoyed it. I said, no, I could tell at the beginning. He goes, and everything's frozen. And he <laughs> and he's, get a cup. Yeah. One of his end set. He goes, I can't even get this unscrewed. <laughs> he was like, oh, it's so cold. I think everyone have felt a bit like that yeah. by the end, haven't they? Well, I was, ship- <coughs> I was breaking down on a top four and swinging everything on a top four. And then when you wanted to change your rigs, you had to like go, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> blow on every section. And yeah. every time you struck, you felt like your pole was breaking. Yeah. And, going, <coughs> <coughs> and it was all the ice cracking inside your joints. I'm going to put this on, the, I'm going to put this, on this moment in time. I've got, got, oh, I haven't got it on here. I've, sh- I've got Godders. And it's... Mm, from- <laughs> He's at end section, it's frozen to his second section, and it's got a bit of ice about that long. God, is that cold? It certainly is. <laughs> just like, just cake the whole thing. Yeah. Just solid. And he was just going, what? Look at this. It's yeah. just like. Mine was the same. Mine. You, the top end, your pole was like. Well, yeah, my whole thing tip ended up like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> the weight it's like ice. you've got a 20 elastic in yeah. your pole. Like, <coughs> you know, and the water was that cold, even if you dipped that in, it never melted. It just made it worse because it got more ice on it. Well, yeah. your pole floats going under because you had yes. ice on the bristle. Yes. Yeah. I, work, I sussed it out after about five minutes. I thought, my float's taking on water. And then I pulled it in and I realised there was a tiny blob of ice yeah. on it. So I put a dob of Vaseline, well, bristle grease, on every single yeah. one of my float bristles. I didn't have a problem then. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I've already done so. Yeah. <laughs> kept thinking that I was a float. Yeah. Crazy. Talking of floats, what you got there? Uh, well, these are the Hydra Rapids, which ah. are in. Ooh, love you, Simon's video. <laughs> um, I know everyone keeps asking, oh, where can I get them from? Well, it's pretty obvious. We stock them tackle and baits. Um, so, oh. yeah, Hydra Rapids. So, if you haven't seen the video, shame on you. Yes. So, yes. Uh, we did a lovely video fishing down at Wiggy's yeah, a couple of weeks ago. And he just used a four metre pole. And I was sat whip. there. Four metre whip. Sorry, a four metre whip. And within about two and a half hours, he had 28 pounds of roach. It was like. Yeah, we've got to remember Steve Smith sat there and had 36 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Andy Wilding won the match from there. Didn't yeah, you well, yeah, that area, area. Yeah, that area yeah. must have been solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the float that Rapid. Simon was using in the video. So and now 0.2, 0.3, 0.1, 0.5, 0.75, 1 gram. Perfect yeah. for that type of style of fishing. Yeah. So get in touch with Alex and he'll sort that out. And the last thing we've got... Yeah, we've got these. some wooden hook boxes, um, I like which these. are a bit unique, which Simon's bringing in. Um, not sure 100% on the price. They're not obviously cheap, but they are brilliant quality. So that that's uh, the unloaded. And then also, fully loaded as well. Right, this, it's... They won't see on there, mate. I'll put it over the minute because I right. focused here because I've got the tape measure out again. Ah, uh, okay. You just hold it up. I'll hold it up. Okay. So we've got that one, and I'll do a close up so everyone can see it. Yeah. So I've got that one as well. Yeah. So pretty unique, really. Yeah. Like Some little Bob would probably want for Christmas. Do you use hook lengths, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. B six eleven's pretty tight. That's tired. it. Tired. That's yeah. all I want. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah. Oh, good. I think that's such a good idea. Yeah. It's a really clever idea. Is it common over here to have this kind of setup, or is it more of an Italian type theme? Or what to have the hook? Yeah. Well, the hook boxes with the hooks in is not common. Obviously, hook lengths. We all got millions of hook lengths. Um, different lengths, different diameters. How do you store yours? I've got about twenty small plastic ones. I probably have got even more than that actually. 20, 25 hook boxes with all different hook patterns and lengths. Oh, right. So, like, you might be like a. Got the same setup, but there's. Similar, yeah. 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 What about you, Cheesy? How do you have yours? I've like? got most of mine on them Preston. Yeah. Sort of six inch ones, eight inch yeah. ones. Mm. And I use them when yeah. they've. When you use them, re- you can reuse them again, can't you? Yeah. I mean, Preston do the uh, mag store, which is quite yeah. handy. Yeah. You can just buy the eight on a stick and it just clips into That's the hook it. box. Yeah. Do Dredden Definitely. do a nice setup as well? Yeah, they? they do. Um, they do the rig sticks type thing. Yeah, because we. Were, I don't think many people look realise this. The Dredden have got no, a really good range. They have, yeah, yeah. yeah. So going back to this Guru one, Guru obviously do them ready-made hook clamps. For commercial fishing, especially, 
there's no need to to buy to no. tie your own really because they're perfect now. But yeah. natural venues, this is where sort of Simon's got with his Hydra, ready tied five inch hook clamps. They're a bit unique and special. So, so these are the Hydra ready mades that you can buy in the packs and then transfer uh, them straight. Mm, the five inch ones will fit in that one, but not in that one. I don't think. I think that's a bit different. In them ones are longer, aren't they? Um, I think they stretch. It just gives a little bit. But we'll, yeah. we'll sort that sort that out later. Because this has got the the pre made mm, sizes. That comes it. complete like that. So obviously, you think how many hooks you're paying for there? How much time? Yeah. yeah. Well, Tilna hooks in there, and I would have was a ten on each one of them. Yeah. I would have thought eight or ten anyway. So it's all yeah. need sorting. Wow. Yeah. That's a good idea, there, isn't it? I like that. It's got little magnets here as well, and it keeps it. Mm -hmm. Nice. And they're white, so you can see what you're doing. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? We'll get some close-ups of that at the end, and I'll overlay it so people can see. Right, some really good ideas there. Cool. So there's lots lots of Christmas ideas, and also rig ideas, and I've messed up your product. Is it me, or is it hot in here? Oh, yeah. It's boiling. It's ridiculously <laughs> hot. I can't work out why. I'm <sighs> such a skin flint with the heat in. I'll look after you, though, put it on before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, make it for yesterday. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if you got chill blains or something. Well, it's actually all right, to be honest. Yes, yeah, honestly. The well, conditions, get, I thought, you know. Let's get on to it, because, uh, okay, I'll set the scene. So, what I did Friday, I went down to Bennett with, and I did some shots, took the camera, because it was a nice day, wasn't it? So, yeah, in the lovely, afternoon, yeah. I thought, a bit of ice, a bit of snow, about, uh, a bit of frost about still. We don't often get this now in the fence. So, I did a bit of that, and I thought, that's, quite, that's a good idea, because then I woke up Sunday morning, at six o'clock, and I thought, you lot are mad fishing in this. Then I thought to myself, I'm just as stupid because mm, it's you're I, filming I'm it. filming it. <laughs> and um, so I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll go and park outside the church at Bennett because now I know where I'm going. And I walked to the five halls, and I thought, as I was driving down through town here, my car said minus five. And as I got out, out of March, it went minus five and a half. And I'm thinking, it's thick fog, minus five and a half. This is madness. Parked at the church, walked over the footbridge, and I just dropped a stone on the ice. And normally it's a bit slushy, isn't it, next mm -hmm. to the bridge? Yep. And it went like a high pitched ting. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's solid. <laughs> walked down to the five oars, and I got down there thinking, this is cold. I'm thinking, God, this is going to be a bit of a groove. I'm getting <laughs> the pub, and everyone's like keen. And, and uh, yeah, so we went from there, and then I. Um, because I walked down, you gave me a lift to the... Mm. I'd never been to the farmer's... Farm yard. Farm yard before. And it was weird. It's funny, isn't it? When all the car, everyone's parked, or where are you, John? you got a good team draw, and everyone was in a rush, weren't they? Because mm. they knew they didn't have... We fished four and a half hours, so we had an extra half hour to break the ice, which is a good job we did, really. Well, good job we did, because I said to my mate next door, I said, what's the time? You went 10 o'clock and I ain't got a thing out of my bag, then. Mm. You know, that's... so yeah, so you guys had to get you had to get down to your peg, and then you had to negotiate how you were gonna actually tactically break the ice. Mm. Mm. And I should imagine Ray Manny was telling me there's a swim near the bridge that's got a new culvert. Yeah, and I'm thinking new culvert. There's yeah. a new culvert opposite, yeah, and it comes out lakeside close. And all the ice. Was well, there's no ice there. No. no. So that that, that weren't in, was it? No. Was it in, or was that the peg one? Yeah, it would have been in. Yeah. yeah, peg one. That must have been the only peg H1. in the whole match yeah. where nobody had to break any ice. Who's on it, John Taylor? <laughs> no, he was nearer the bridge, he was. Oh, nearer the bridge. Yeah, peg three was where Stuart Northrop, that real big open peg. Yeah, was. that's the one with the culvert, isn't it? Is it? Oh, well, Stuart Northrop yeah. was there. Oh, right. Yeah. Because that shows you when they dressed up. I thought that was mossy. Did you? Because he'd got his mouth, that's on the water, see my glasses, and, and I thought it was... Was he kneeling down then, Stu, at the time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stu's about eight foot yeah. tall. But no, honestly, I thought it was Andrew Moss when he, when he was talking. I see his brain and gear and that. Then when I looked at the, the results, I thought, well, that weren't Mossy, who was it? And then I went back and had a look, and it was Stu at North Rock, <laughs> yeah. That just shows you, you mix people up when they're all... They yeah. all look the same. They yeah. all look yeah. the same, don't you? So it was, a, it was a really weird... It was a weird atmosphere, as in the fog... Yeah. And for me, I'd never seen like all these match angers in this farmer's sort of paddock. And uh, yeah, it has, it has an, it's always an atmosphere, but a nice one. But you can tell everyone's kind of mm. thinking about what they've got to do. And obviously, um, 
we had the scenario where we had Matrix Image and uh, Brown in Hot Rods equal first. Mm -hmm. So they had that to play for. Yeah. And then it was uh, Tackle and Bates were third and Chris and Peterborough were fourth mm. by one point. And Stan J. Gold weren't that far behind. No, either. no. So it was very concertina for the first three places because now obviously the top three go through to the Winter League final. So I've learned in the morning, wherever the draw is, not many people are going to want to speak to me. Because they're just like focused on what they got to do. One, they got to know where to go. Some of them aren't quite sure of where to park. And so that you can see people are kind of just working out what they need to do. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. But uh, I really enjoyed just that first little section because it was quite funny with Aidy and, God and Godders and then Chrissy and they're all breaking the ice. And uh, I had a little walk down with Mike and a couple of other blokes were like just, you could see it, they were a bit unsure of... Mm. what to do it just threw them whereas well, others were just boom straight yeah. in <laughs> yeah. setting gear up for everyone else yeah. and... you could tell it just kind of it's just a little bit I'd say people... there was one or two there yesterday that never had broke ice before probably yeah I mean years ago that used to be a bit of kit you always had with you yeah. Yeah. was an ice breaker you know but I mean for the last five years at least if there's been any ice you've been able to break it with normally, your whole not, you? especially like this time yeah, of year it's normally yeah. like January or yeah, sort yeah, of shit isn't it bit, yeah. but like I say I bet there's one or two of them younger ones there yes he'd never even used an ice breaker really especially Barnaby I don't yeah, think but, yeah no I bet he wouldn't know what was going on but also yeah, it's, it's a good fun though it's, isn't it? it, it yeah. it's not a weight on a piece of rope if you had that you wouldn't get anywhere you'd actually lose it because it would cut off probably on the ice yeah. you need a short length of chain as yeah. well don't you and it's all about getting the right weight as well because yeah. you've got to be able to one, you've got to chuck it where it needs to go, so if it's and too it's heavy, yeah. and it's got to break the ice as well. Because you've got to get it to go, go through the Dave ice. Dave Lee was next door to me, and oh, every time he chucked his air, he used to just go through the ice, well then when he pulled, he just used to fly air again, you see, he yeah. ain't got a chain or anything on yeah. it, you see. And the chain's important to actually cut the ice. As you yeah, if you get it right, yeah. you can get that weight going up and down, you can You can cut. saw through the ice, yeah, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. the trick to that's it. That's an art on it, a lot of them have got it off to a T, have not they? Yeah. yeah. And they slide, they cut that wedge out, yeah. and they press it on it and slide it under the other bit of ice, and yes. that's it. Well, God is very good at doing it, he, yeah. he had a, it was an old sash window weight mm -hmm. yeah. on a chain, Yeah. and he was... He was telling me that he was trying to make himself a channel, but uh, narrow at the top and wider at the ends. Yeah. So he had more room yeah. for his net and everything, but he didn't want too big a space at the, where he was going to fish. I'd, I'd done that once on Morton's League with a can of weight or satch weight, wind of weight, throwing it on and that, chucked it. And it went in like a like rocket, went straight through the ice, made a hole like that. Well, could I get it out? I'd hook it on the back of a, <laughs> like a Volvo Estate. I'd hook it the rope on the back of that to pull it out. I couldn't get it out. Really? Yeah, it went straight through, and the only hole it made was that size. Well, of course, it weren't to come back through there, was it? No. With me pulling at an angle, but the ice was that thick. It did go through, but I just, I just couldn't pull it. Look, enough. I, the, the field was hard because it was that frosty. So we got that from you to take the cars down Morton's Lane so a few years mm. ago. Come on, Morton's yeah. Lane, I, yeah. I, I. And that day, I thought, what's that running up here? And I looked, and there was a mink, and that had got a bloody great eel in it. Must have been two pound. And that running along the ice because it couldn't swim anywhere. It found a hole near the bridge and it got this eel and it was coming back towards where they used to live mm. at Ring's End there, didn't they? And then bushes and all that till before they built that new roundabout and everything. I haven't been yeah. down there for about 43 years. Yeah, I'll keep having a look over wow. there. But we used to fish there. We've done a lot of work there at the moment. Again. It's the counter wash still there. Yeah, oh. yeah. We used to catch some lovely pike out. Yeah. Not very big. There used to be everything in there, didn't The tench. I think it got netted, didn't it? I think. Yeah, I think it is. They've been down. And when there. I went down there one day at March Farm's end, there must have been a shoulder bream for the first five pegs in in the canter drain. Yeah, in the, like they yeah. head back towards Rings End. Yeah. Lovely bream, you know. But they're not there now. No, it's like tench. We used to go down there tension, that didn't in there. It Never fished it. No. no. That's a good area. It's one of the I I one of the I, I fell in. Well, I kind of jumped in, not on purpose. You know the bit of March Farmers near the lock gates? Yeah. No, that isn't March Farmers, is it? That's no, Rings End. Rings End. Yeah. So we were by the lock a bit further back. I was about six or seven. I caught one. don't know what it was. Dad had hooked it for me. Apparently the same story goes, he dropped it, flipped out of his hand on the floor and I've shot through his legs and grabbed it. Oh, put it back. And I, in one motion, I've gone to put the fish back and followed it. <laughs> <laughs> Forward roll into the... Into the river. Morton's yeah. Lane. Yeah. I think the last time I fished Morton's Lane, I'm to exactly, it's funny how things stick in your head. I was standing on the bridge at March Farmers, 
pegged a few pegs. It was a club match, March and District Club match then. And Ron Clark turned up and he said, I heard the news. I said, what's that? He said, Princess Di was killed. And that's, that's, that was when we was fishing Morton's League. Wow. That was, that, isn't it funny how things stick in your head? Yeah. yeah Ron Clark come over the bank and said, have you heard the news this morning? I went, yeah. no, what, what, what's happened? And that was when Princess Di got killed. So that's 20 odd, that's 20 odd years ago now, isn't it? Must have been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, But that was the last time, well, I wouldn't say it's the last time I fished Morton's League. Used to, my first ever junior match was on there. Yeah. And that's the first time I ever learned about worm fishing, like picking it up and dropping it. And this is gospel tree. I sat there fishing and this swan come along and it picked my float up, dropped it, and I got burnt straight away. And I carried on. Honestly, it's just like, I don't say I'm starved. <laughs> but they were, weren't they? They'd come along and they, they just picked my float up in its mouth and then dropped it. You're starting to sound like Bobby Bates last yeah, night. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's Ze- zebras and... Uh, yeah, nature's no. day. <laughs> zebras and wilderness. You could write a book on what happens, couldn't you, really? You know, yeah. you lasso fish and, you know, and all things like that, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. So the swan taught you how to actually catch perch yeah, from yeah. the Yeah, because in them days, you used to just stick a worm on and chuck it out. You never thought about lifting it up and down. And that, did you get it? No. Well, you float rods, really, weren't it, them days? Was it? Yeah. That'd only be when poles would just start coming out 25 years ago, wouldn't it be? When yeah. you sort of started doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing what you remember, though. Yeah. And our place is kind of like pinging yeah. your head. Okay, right, back, so back to yesterday then. It was, um, yeah. the, it's, it's been the first proper frost we've had for a long, long time. Isn't it? Everything was frozen solid. So um, I I was watching the the melee of all these weights going in and ropes following. And it, it, was, it, was, it was a really weird sound because it was echoing, mm-hmm. wasn't it? And... Um, you, the anchors were very quiet. I think everyone was just kind of like, oh, uh, mm. yeah. What not, are we doing here? Not, quite, we yeah, what? not quite sure what's what, going what on. What do you mean, Snowflake Martin Caldercott? <laughs> so, not quite sure what's going on. So, I actually, so I thought, well, I got a bit of footage and I came home. And then I um, left here about two to drive back down to Bennett. It's not very far, obviously. And um, turned the car on, minus three. And I'm thinking, hmm. Blow me, that has warmed up a, a bedded dorm two degrees, Tuesday, yeah. yeah. So that's gone from minus five to minus three in the day. And I'm thinking, everything that you've... I was amazed that the holes that you had smashed hadn't frozen yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. How it hadn't frozen over, I do yeah, not know. It didn't run or anything. No. It did at Benny. Did it? For about ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. Absolutely, it just run like the Trent for ten really? minutes. Like, what was that all about? Yeah. All the ice, because the boat had been through. Yeah smashed the crap out of all the ice so everyone was like sword fighting and then all of a sudden this ice where the boat had been through just decided to drift and it all stopped it just went you could see this and Martin's going oh there's a big iceberg coming towards you I said oh the Titanic's on its way is it yeah yeah and literally the flow stopped as it got in front of me I thought it could have gone another two metres perfect so then you cup and get out Moving it all about, and then you get set again, and you go in, and clump, another one. Unbelievable, isn't it, really? Yeah, I, I, when I come back, I'm thinking, half the anglers would have packed up, because no one's catching. Mm. And I was there, and I'm thinking, everybody's still here. Yeah. That was the first thing, as in, that's amazing. I, start, I said, have you had anything? I said, eight. He goes, yeah, I've had a few. I go, how many? He goes, about 100. Mm. Went, God has went, I've got 140. I said, you sound just like John Taylor. <laughs> And I kept walking along, I had a word with Chrissy and then Tom Moretti, and I said, they said, yeah, we've had a fish from the off. Yeah. I went, no way. Unbelievable, isn't it? And they were saying, one yeah. section, that was dry for two hours. Yeah. What, I said, what, the end section? I went, no, one of the ones... Third one down from the end. How does that work? E section, just to the left of where I was. How does yeah. that work? I think... Isn't that strange? You think it would just like gradually... That's probably the most open bit, it's the widest bit, it's probably the coldest bit. Mm. But I think what didn't help, there was... Back end of my section, there was two pegs not drawn. So D7 and D8. They, no one broke the ice. So everyone this side were on a pile of fish. Everyone that side sat there for two hours and not had a bite. Mm. But if they'd, if there'd have been anglers sat on them two pegs, then would fish have would have come, come through quicker. 100%. Yeah. What do you reckon is the bait, the noise? Yeah, well, yeah, just the smell. They were hungry fish when they turned mm. up. They wanted to eat. Crap. Without a doubt. It's incredible. I mean, how did you find it in March? Was yeah, it... just saying, they wanted the food, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A pretty responsive. Right? I mean, I had to say, I went there thinking, well, we ain't going to catch a lot here. We ain't going to catch a lot today, you know, these conditions. I'd been on Town Bridge and it was gin clear. 
you know, you could read a newspaper yeah. from the bridge with the water was that clear. I thought that was going to be hard. And I, I walked out here to check everything. Yeah. And I looked you know. at, I could see halfway across. Mm. I yeah. could see the bottom yeah. halfway across. And I'm thinking. And then you've gone you know, in right. and you're about to float Barry first foot in. Yeah, you <laughs> no. can't see a fish though. No. no. No, that's what we were saying. I went fishing here. Even though that hair clear that was in town, mm. you, you can't stand on there and see the fish. No. No, they've got a good camera for that. They have, haven't they? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I fed, I fed a little, like, a little ball of ground bait at three plus three yeah. just over the ice. I thought I'll start there. I don't want to go past that too early because I might not get another bite. So I dropped, dropped in, fed my lines. I dropped in, I put my rig in, like lowered it in, bristled it in, and it just went. I thought, was that bite struck? Nothing. I thought, oh my God. I hope I haven't just missed my only bite of the day. <laughs> <laughs> dropped yeah. it back in, it just went. Clunk roach. I thought, oh god, and it was it was a bite of chuck, and yeah. everyone was a bite of chuck straight away, yeah. in my section. That's incredible, unbelievable. It is all that commotion. How, it, it was actually better fishing than it normally is. Yeah, I enjoyed that more because there was a few of these little crappy little rud fed later on that you sometimes you can't get through them, but because it was so cold, excuse me, they didn't feed. And when you caught a fish, it weren't a big fish, but it was a nice stamp fish for Benick. Yeah. You know, and you, you had to catch them. They weren't easy to catch, but it's more enjoyable because they weren't these little crappy little things yeah, shipping out 11 metres on, yeah. on the top. When two or three of the big weights on here were hemp. Hemp. Yeah. I think Danny Grimsley caught on hemp. Did he? Um, Dave Lee did next to me. Oh, Gav did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which... I took hemp with me, but I thought he knows I had hemp. <laughs> but I just left it in, in the bag. I never even thought, well, they won't want hemp. No, they? They that's the thing. Yeah. Big perch or worm? Mm, no, no. What? No, I didn't have You're no worm with right? me. <laughs> what? Another thing, I thought, well, the tension ain't going to feed today. Because funny enough, Pricey come running up to me. He said, hey, got any worm? And he must have been shocked off what I was telling him a lie when I said, no, I ain't got none. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he wanted a food worm. That don't happen often. No. I think a lot of people's worms probably froze overnight. That's it, yeah. That was the yeah. problem. Yeah. 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 I had loads of people come to me, you got any worms? It's like, yeah. Well, mine are all frozen. Yeah. Right, before, because obviously we need cheeses to explain what's happening with the winter league, but before mm-hmm. we get into that, do you want to finish off yet tomorrow? Um, tomorrow. Yesterday's match? Yeah. Or, yeah, or should we... No. Well, yeah, I was going to say, we could leave it to a right suspense and people have got to watch the video on Friday. What do you want to explain? No, no, no. No, go on. No. Um, try. So, obviously, it was the last round. Yeah. As you beautifully explained, there was still plenty to fish for. Um, and with it being those conditions, it would have, could have been, was a little bit of a banana skin. So, um, winning on the day was Stan J Gold. They've come back from the dead, appeared out of nowhere with 33 points. Runners up on the day was Cresta Peterborough with 34. Third was Dial Tackle and Bates 37. Fourth was Matrix Image 38. And fifth was Hot Rods 39. So there was a point between those three teams and a point between the top two, first two teams. So the way the standings were, obviously Brown and Hot Rods and Image were tied. Obviously, Image beat Hot Rods by one single point on the day, which meant that they won the league. So, well done to Wally with the Brollies team. Sid, they've pissed it this year. <laughs> um, and then runners-up were Brown and Hot Rods with, I think they had, I think it went 15 and then 16 points. And then down to third spot, which obviously this year, third spot qualifies. Um it was really, 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 really close. So obviously, Cresta, Peterborough are a point behind Dial, Tackle and Bait. So they needed to either beat us by two clear spaces um, because we had a slightly better cumulative points. So it worked out that they beat us by just one space on the day. So they tied level one nineteen with us. But they lost out by just four cumulative points in the whole series to qualify. So Did they eight, two three seven? Uh, I think it was like two three seven and two three three. three. That's mental, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Ha- so them little half ounces and ounces here, there through the series make a massive yeah. difference. Yeah. But and can- it always does in this league. So yeah, the winners had sixteen, reason. second place is seventeen, third uh, third and fourth had nineteen. 
Is that right? So, yeah, 16, Seven. no, uh, four. So 15, 16, and then two teams on 19. Yeah. I'm real, isn't it? And then to split those two teams, had to go to cumulative... And then obviously Stan Jays were behind them on 21. I think they weren't far behind because they came first yesterday. Yeah. 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 They did. Yeah. Um, so I've just been completely thrown. Someone just messaged me. So they had their car set on fire. When? Last night. Where? I'll, I'll show you later. Just uh, some like, uh, That's why I've gone a bit quiet. I thought it might be Derek Skinner sending me uh, through right. the results. Someone sent me some. It probably yeah. some. So I'm kind of sitting there going, there's some crazy people in the world cheesy, aren't there? Who sends you results? Derek Skinner? Yeah, from um, Boston. And he hadn't, hadn't sent them through, so I'm presuming... He used to be a regular here. He, he his name he? from the past he is. So I was presuming... He's turned up here in his... He was turned up yesterday in his slippers. That's how he's turned up in his slippers every week. When he... Do you... Can you remember fish? No. 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 Oh, he used to be a regular. His first bloke, I think, ever to sort of fish bread punch on it. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. So and then right. when everybody cottoned onto it, what well, you know, like he sort of stopped coming then when he couldn't win nothing. Mm. Yeah. So I'm expecting, I saw it, I was expecting, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. oh my God. So I was like, well, I think he got a bit into it with his boys with football and that, you know, and sort of then stopped coming a bit. Is he into motorbikes as well? I don't know. Or cycle, no. one of the other. I know he's got... Yeah, well, cycling, whatever. Yeah, Spillsby, I thought he lived somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I haven't had a message from him for the results. So I presumed yeah, it was cancelled. Right, right, a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that winter league was amazing. So uh, I went down round four. I just did the organisers. Round five, wasn't quite sure what to video, but it kind of worked a bit. Round six, I tried to capture how close it was. So that will come out Friday. So hopefully, um, you'll see how close it was and how the, the, the four, two, four teams at the top were sort of thinking about how they were going to approach the day. And I've got a bit of the footage of the madness with the ice breaking as well. So <laughs> have a look at that. That was mm. That's quite interesting. But um, I'll tell you what, yesterday, everyone was a winner. The organisers, the anglers, it was fantastic how you guys all stuck at it. Mm. I had to use bright red card just to see for the big numbers. So you could see them in the morning. I could imagine them being all white, like the frost. I mm. thought they'll yeah. use bright red card. Yeah. Incredible. Is it Benick permanent pegs? No. Uh, well, yeah, first yes, 40 no, are. Yeah. First 40 platforms yeah. are, yeah. Because that's what yeah. threw me yesterday. I'm thinking, I, I didn't think, but you know, afterwards I'm going, well, I didn't see any of the pegs. And yeah. of course, they're all on the pla- And then I realised they're steps mm. down and all mm-hmm. sorts. They're, quite, they're nice old pegs, aren't they? They're, they're getting, getting battered now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet they will do, yeah. Yeah. Right, Cheesy. So every year we have the Christmas Open. And next I think, uh, what about the individuals oh, on sorry. the day? You know, we can't forget well, back to back, can you we? stopped talking, you were looking at your phone. So I well, no, you was rambling on about some Careful rubbish. Two, please, if you forgot about oh, it. Oh, no, dear, yeah, old Millhouse won't be... I'll stop, yeah, sorry. I'll get ahead of myself God, back to back, Butler. Yeah. yeah. Go on, then. Um, <laughs> so, usual draw bags were at March, same old faces. Um, can't believe Colin Oatman was it. And Danny Mason, they were both at Benick. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um... So individually wise, um, Benick, there were seven sections and three sections at March. As we expected, March dominated the frame, which is obviously the reason why we did continental payout the week before in, in the in the open match. Um, so we might as well mention Meansy. Meansy was the best weight at Benick from D uh, five, six, something like that. Just where the tree is on Little London. Um, he had £13.5 so well done Tickle the Pickle Louis Farou. Um and I was second in that section with 13 2 I think um, Paul Cowan was next to me so I've got my own back now um, £12 big £12 so it was a real tight little section yeah. it was good um, and I think the next best weight was probably Godders did he have £9 something like that I think it was anyway £8 so. something Eight fourteen, yeah. yeah. So, for the conditions, Benick and how many pegs were on it as well. I was yeah. expecting whole sections to really, really, really struggle. Basically, seventy pegs. Yeah, there were seventy yeah. pegs. Yeah. yeah, near well, yeah. So, uh, yes. Twenty four March, fifty six at Benick. Yeah, eighty peg, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, of course. Cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, my, my maths so, math let me down. There, you can see. Yeah, she, you're a school teacher yeah. like John Taylor. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Maths let me down badly. Yeah. And, um, I was thinking 100. No, that was 80, yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, March, overall winner was back to back 
Millhouse, Gavin Butler. He drew the peg to the right of where he won the match from the week before. Yeah. Um, same old story. When the team sheet comes out, who's it, March? Ray, Gav, oh, standard. Where's Alex and everyone else? Oh, they're all at Benick and wherever. <coughs> um, not that I'm bitter or anything, you know. Not um, much. No, like. no. I think Gav's been... I think Gav, just to wind us all up a bit more, put a memory from this time last year and he drew March as well. So he's only been on Benick, I think, twice in two years. It's amazing because Gav carries him in Ireland yeah. as well. You think you well, would. you know why now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, he gets hey? pegs. Yeah, well hold done. On, hold on. Well uh, done, Gav, is anyway. It, is well it, done. Is it? Well drawn. The, the captain or the manager, you, how yeah. you've put people down in order on the sheet. Yes. So actually, Well, no, Ray. normally Ray gets the sheet and it's somehow they're on the best pegs every time. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, and I'm out in the wilderness somewhere. In the fog. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, Gav won the match. They put, they, yeah, they put you out there because they know you'll come back with top points anyway. Oh, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Cheers, mate. Yeah. At least someone's... Someone, yeah. Yeah. Someone's... Uh, yeah. Put Ray there, he'd most probably come home. <laughs> <laughs> Can't fish his whip there, can he? No, that's it. Um, so, Gav won the match £22. Runner-up was 118 John Taylor. Oh, I'm going to go home if I, I ain't caught anything. He had 598 fish for £20 on it. I think he had about 300 odd fish. Uh, third was Danny Grimsey, was he? Yeah, Danny yeah. Grimsey was third. He had £19. Fourth was Ray the Whip Mally, uh, £17. <laughs> and fifth was. Was Hubbard fifth? Yeah, I think he was, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. old Van Gaal. Has his post delivered to the same. Three pegs yeah, every he match. Like that, he? Yeah, lucky there was no geese there, Rob. Hey, eh? <coughs> and um, so yeah, that was the individuals really. And obviously, while we're on an individual, we've got to mention Neil Adcock, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, the prestigious Stacey Cup is the individual award, which um, obviously people get all sorts of banter from it. And you know, to win that, you you've got to fish well. You have to fish well. Um, and Neil Adcock had nine points, I think, yeah. Yeah. over the whole series in six matches. 1.3 average, that's incredible. That's very, very good. That's right, isn't it, Bob? Mm. Checking my maths. Yeah. You know, I know he puts a lot of effort in on a Wednesday, um, goes Wednesdays, Sundays, and it just proves if you put the effort in, yeah. you know. Um, so well fished, Neil. Well done, mate. That's superb, wasn't yeah. it? I think runner-up was Damien Green, again. Puts a lot of effort in from Image. Uh, third was Abby, wasn't it? Oh, no, I think no. Danny Mason. Danny was Mason third. was third. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grew. Yeah, and then Grew was third. Abby was fourth. Abby I think in there, didn't she? she was fourth. Yeah, and I think Liam was yeah. fifth. Well, yeah. Pegs he draws. There's no chance of him getting a chip shop in, is there? <laughs> Unbelievable. We drew. I can see why they call you Sound Tackle Graves. All year we've been waiting. All s- the thing is, you won't see him now till next winter. Oh, the drains are shit. Oh, <laughs> right. I'm going to decoy. No mud. Blah, 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 blah. Righto, Liam. Doom and gloom. That sounds like half your team. <laughs> Righto. <laughs> and um, he drew peg E1, but the two pegs to his right weren't drawn. Look at the draw. He's never going to get a chip shop. He's end peg every week. Uh, it comes to all of us. I mean, they say about Neil Adcock's drawn very well, but I, I think Liam's drawn better, to be fair. Just saying, Liam, just saying. Um, <laughs> That's unbelievable cheese, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. end of the series. Um, great league, close league. It was great to see Peterborough doing so well. Makes the league even stronger because of it. Yeah. Um, the banter, you know, it's been good. Yeah. Yeah, really good, really good. So... As, uh, it's got so many plus points. It's one. It's not even a criticism. It'd be nice to see some more younger anglers, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, why are we on younger anglers? You see, you're on this, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, section uh, winner um, in C section was Barnaby the Bagger. Barnaby Is Newman. Thirteen. I don't know, he looks about eight, to be honest. I think he's about, he's 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 yeah, he looks 13. about eight. I think he's thirteen. Yeah. Um, he gets quite embarrassed when he keeps having to collect these envelopes off yeah. Caroline, doesn't he? Yeah. But he, he comes second as well in his section in the last. Yes, I round think that, that might have been that might have been default. But yeah, but don't matter. considering the conditions there, he, for a thirteen-year-old lad, yeah. he was only a couple of pegs to my right in the next yeah. section, and he had Abby Kendall one side and Martin Caldercott, yeah. who 
you know, Martin's fished these venues yeah. forever. Very, yeah. very consistent angler, just an absolute snowflake. Um, <laughs> he wasn't going to fish, but they persuaded him to fish. Yeah, it's a good job, as they were. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd have an empty peg to my right. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's, maybe you tried. I bet you tried. I was too cold. Go up, no, too I, was, cold. I was winding him up all day. And, um, and he won his section fair and square, yeah. nine pound fourteen. I think Abby had nine pound four, and Martin had nine pound two. Obviously, I was the other side, and Martin had thirteen two. So uh, he's avoided the chip shot a little for a few yeah. weeks, and because he's a snowflake as well, Martin Caldicott, you've been chip shot this week. I'm oh, really? Afraid. So yes. can thank Barnaby for that. He's been battered by a thirteen-year-old lad off the next peg, and uh, I battered him the other side. So. <laughs> He's getting one of the T-shirts. I tell you what, cheesy giving out chip shoppings on the day yeah. like yesterday. It's bits of it. Oh, it? I have to put with it all. I week. think I should get one every week. I've, <laughs> I've even cleared a space in my wardrobe. I should have that many, but my shoulders are broad. I've done it for so long, you know. He won't pick on me. You Guys, think. he's ruthless. He, he's got certain people he wants yeah. to get. I've, I've noticed that. <laughs> Yeah, well, if that. you give me shit, then <laughs> yeah, look out. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. And then I'm going to give out another award just because everyone keeps badgering me. I think this bloke's probably been chip shopped five out of the six rounds. Um, no, it's not Andy Wilde, and you're right this week, mate. Uh, it's Craig Shaw. He's yeah. probably not in the country now because he's probably yeah, gone he's somewhere. Gone away, yeah, ten yeah, somewhere. Yeah. So you somebody. won't don't avoid me. You have you're getting another chip shopping. Um I might sew five together just to prove a point. Um so Craig Shaw, you've been chip shopped as well. God, we're gonna run out of t shirts at this point, No, you? I've got loads that keep avoiding me, don't they? Um so yeah, that's them. Should we do the other club matches and bits and bobs? Yeah. Oh, he was on that one with Barnaby. They did give him a lovely trophy oh, yeah. for the did, junior yeah. act. Yeah. yeah, it's the best trophy there. Yeah, really. it was. Yeah. Yeah. What, a, what a lovely trophy. I think the last six years it goes Josh Newman, Josh Newman, Josh Newman, Barnaby Bagger, Barnaby, <laughs> yeah. Barnaby yeah. Newman. Yeah. A lovely trophy, that one. Yeah. It'd be quite nice if like the B teams had like an unwritten rule. Where they had to try and get at least one junior in. Yeah. I know it'd be mm. just to try and because yeah. I, I was thinking about this because there's so many initiatives all around the country of people trying to do all these wonderful things to improve juniors and fishing but the bottom line is if kids don't want to go no matter what you do no. but somehow I mean it's just if we can just he's an England international Barnaby is well we just need, mm. we need more don't we we just try mm. we, everyone's got to try and somehow you've got a future ahead on haven't you yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. got to try and get more yeah. more youngsters involved they've got so many things that they do that isn't Necessary getting out of the house. Yeah, but um, anyway. Take that off till the dad, you know. Yeah, he's he all day, all he? this fishing, isn't he? Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. To bring them on, which is nice to see, isn't it? Mm. You know? Well, it was Godber yesterday. Mm. He's always helping Abby out. Yeah. yeah. And that's a little. T- and you think, do you know what? That's You see these, like, um, Barnaby's dad, Godber, yeah. and they're, they're, they're at, it's their team thing, isn't it? It's like they're trying to help mm. out. And you think, do you know what? There's, there I are some. I haven't worked out what Sid does yet, but. <laughs> Sid? <laughs> He's he's the ringmaster, isn't he? Oh no! <laughs> but it's, it's he loves Damo, it. Damo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's Gary getting on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Yeah, we're pissing it. All right, mate. Bye. If them lot ring me once a week, they ring me six times. Do they? Gary Miller. He's yeah. on the phone every other day when yeah. the week's coming up. What's yeah. the river like? How's it going to fish? Yeah. And then he just goes quiet because he ain't got nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's a guy. And I... then Sid rings other up. Is J6 and J5 on the turning bay? Yes, same pegs as the yeah. last. He, tell, he tells Sid every week the pegging, yeah. Yeah. and then he goes, no, they've changed it, he's changed it. He goes, no, Sid, it's the same, every, not every Lovely time, enough, it's the same. One or two of your peg numbers were still dead, oh, so right. I knew exactly that everyone was on right. the same peg. Right. Because Gar- I didn't peg it the week before, because I yeah. weren't here. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Miller's yeah, been same. superb with my, when I've been filming. Yeah. I'm very, you know, up for having a chat and mm. that stuff, and it just... I don't know these people. It's just mm. quite nice when they kind of like. Yeah, well, nice bloke. They are it's lovely. Yeah, so. yeah, very, very, very good angle. Well, mate, come on, because we're cracking on. Yeah. So Ramsey and District, the usual Ramsey St Mary Horn Wednesday fished its head off. Yeah, there was it was weird. There was an equal first, which was Multi and Richard Scratcher Malcolm Plant, both with eighteen pound five, and then equal third was the Cray Brothers. These are Cray Brothers, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Dave Stills and Ivan Stills were £15.3. So Benjamin and his younger brother both tied. 
So good weights there. And I think that most people caught sort of double figures on yeah. Wednesday. Then obviously Sunday, um, they were back down Ramsey St. Mary's and Big Fish Kilby. Paul Kilby, £8.3. Runner up was Richard Scratcher, seven fourteen, And then Caster Blaster from Peg 7 got third with £5.5. Five. So he can catch fish past Peg 3. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm well surprised done. he gets a load of hassle, are you? It's <laughs> unbelievable. Don't worry, I'll get it back. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Tuesday Club, Bob. You weren't there oh, this well, week. I was in Benidorm, why not? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Your name's not down. They was at Ravely again, and Mike Moen is at about four on the trot. He's one. Fifteen pound dead. Loads of little rud on a whip. Tony Bull nine pound four, and then Lionel seven fourteen. So it's a few fish in Ravely. I mean, I'm, yeah. I I haven't been to Ravely for oh, five years. Well, I've been years. there a couple of times, and I've had sort of I think eight nine pound both times. Yeah, know? and I've sort of been in the middle pegs mm-hmm. five or six, mm-hmm. but they've caught half a range. What sort That's of fish the first are they? time they've gone the other side of the bridge. There must have been one or two more there. Yeah, well, I know there was a club match on Saturday in twenty ah, pound a roach one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah. Tuesday club. That's that's a good idea, isn't it? How many people go into that normally? Jesus. They get up to 15, some twos. Nice. Mm-hmm. They're all sort of senior, so yeah. supposed to be pensioners sort of thing, you know. We let Steve Smith in, but... And he still tries to get a pensioner's book. <laughs> Does he? We'll see you that, but they won't have it. <laughs> <laughs> he says to me, get my book for me, you know. <laughs> he is sure. tight. He's squeaky tight, isn't he? <laughs> it was, you know, any what's, the old, what's the old saying? He's as tight as a duck's ass, yeah. so, and that's watertight. <laughs> <laughs> you give him a pint of gas, he's still got him two weeks later. He asks yeah. people, have got any bait left? <laughs> oh, I don't show you what. <laughs> yeah, I've never drawn near him, so. No. Um, so the Wilsey Saturday series was Carrot Wash, with an equal first end, which was Mark Barron and Arthur Smallman, £2.12 and a half. They like grueling, them boys, yeah. don't they? Oh, don't they, just? And then, uh, think... tight ass, yeah. Simon <laughs> Smith, £2.7. Simon Smith? Steve, Steve Smith. Smith, sorry. So uh, And he come away with two pints of pinkies and a pint of gas <laughs> as well. <laughs> Honestly, he told me. <laughs> he said, the bloke next door packed up, and he said to him, make any bait, you know? He said, yeah, yeah. He's recycling, it's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and that's it. Everyone else was uh, snowed off or frozen off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, well, this this weather looks set, doesn't it, for a few more days? But yeah. I think Sunday is going to be windy and a lot, a bit milder. So I well, should have had a match tomorrow, a little service match, but they cancelled that. Have they? Well, a lot of them come from London way, and it was snowing up there. So it was bad, wasn't it? Yeah, so they cancelled it. Yeah, a bit another day. There's only six or eight of us. It's not worth it, is it? No. Right, so I, yeah, I was a bit premature, wasn't I? With, uh, yeah, me, yeah, yeah, about, Just keen, half, about half an hour. Yeah, I, I'm a bit conscious this is going to be the longest podcast ever, but it, no. it's because you keep droning on. It's unbelievable. We've got a guest. You haven't given him a, a chance to speak. Right, eh? <laughs> look at his face. Look, <laughs> you're all right. <laughs> right, so let's go back to where I was about forty-five minutes ago. Um, so this is it. This Sunday. Yeah. It's the prestigious March Christmas Open. That's it. So how long have you been running these for, Bob? As long as I can remember. Got to be, I don't know, got to be 34 years. Mm. Really? We've had headquarters at the Men of March, we've had the windmill rooms, even the George Pub, the Station Hotel, Brazza, Legion. They've all been our headquarters over the years, you know. How many pegs is it? What, this Sunday, yeah. 90 pegs. And I bet you have been fully booked for weeks, have you? God, oh, that's what I've got this for. Not that lot. And then you've got to work that out. Have you got reserve list? That's a reserve list. <laughs> and you're going on to January, February. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've turned that off on the phone because it wouldn't stop ringing if I'd left it on. You'd been. Is it still going to be on? Is it still yeah, going to be on? Yeah. Okay, so 90 peg. What do people need to know who are um, in the comp? Draw next to Gav Butler. Yeah. And you'll win. You've got a chance to win. Draw in between peg. 18 to 50, I would have thought. If you're in that 18 <laughs> to 50, you'll stand a good chance. Where's 18? Is it not 18 will be helps, uh, Wigston's Bridge, and 50 will be somewhere here. Mm. Maybe less than that then, really, because yeah. is that 18, above, will it be above Wiggy's 18 or below? 18 will be just above it. Yeah, I've got 20, there'll be 
28 pegs on Wigston's this week. Mm. Are you, you um, pegging all uh, the narrows? Every, everywhere we yeah. pegged. Got to be to get them all in. Yeah, yeah. Behind the library? One or two of the close pegs will be in this time. Yeah. They want to keep coming. Yeah, behind the library. Them two new pegs I'm going to put in opposite, behind the town toilets. What about one there, the old Balti? Pig Market Corner. Yeah, yeah I've got a couple on there, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have walk through Friday and work out the 90. And if I, if I can miss that bit out, I will do. But What, Pig Market? Yeah, it's a bit unfair. I should hate to think how many fish have been up named Brady this last couple of weeks. Oh, Jesus. If you're catching £50 pound yeah. out here, what must be stacked in the name Brady yeah. ain't getting touched. All the skimmers, I reckon. Yeah, because yeah, they ain't been showing other skimmers. It's just no, I think, I think all them skimmers. Anyway, that's there. that, 90 of them. It's the Christmas match. They all know the basics, the draws are the seven. They'll get an envelope this time with draw tickets in, because there's a big Christmas draw at the end. Mm-hmm. All three comes in with the ticket money. Beautiful. So you've got so a lot I'll of speak, I should say, my wife's at home now sorting all the prizes <laughs> and things out. They also get prizes for the top ten anglers as well. So it's like a fur and feather, like the old fur, fashion fur and feather. Right, yeah. what so club used to run so the winner of the match comes out first and picks a number, don't they? Whatever's yeah. on that number, you get that prize. Yeah, you don't get the best prize, perhaps. It's no, done it's, by. Yeah. You get a rake of money. You anyway. pick an envelope. You could win the worst prize on that table, but it yeah. saves all the best prize. You could come last in the tenth and get the hamper. Yeah, you know, That's so good. It's, it's good. They love yeah. it. Yeah, you know, and where they get free tickets, and there's a lot of them still buy extra tickets. Yeah, yeah it's good. Where is Stan? Stan always buys the tenth worth of tickets extra. He loves draws. I don't know why. A lot of people do, and it yeah. creates that buzz, doesn't it? Yeah, the they love it, especially now we use the Brazza Hall. It's I was going to say, so it's isn't it ideal now. The isn't beginning it? and the ends at the Brazza, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Do you know what? I didn't realise how big it was. Mm. It's massive in there, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. a car park, everything's good, isn't yeah. it? So it's fantastic, yeah. Because yeah. so have... I did think that when I went to Bennick Sunday morning, because I was sort of messing about here, taking that boat. When I got to Bennick, it was like a... cars were parked anywhere, didn't they? Mm. And that, what the residents must think there every Sunday morning, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. basically, it's what, half seven draw. So what time is the browser open on Sunday? Well, we use the small hall. Um, we don't do breakfast down there. Because everybody, not being funny, got with the spoons on the door. I was going to say, yeah. and get Mackey D's, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's it, travelling. Yeah. There ain't many, you know. Spoons opens at seven, do not they? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's where most of them go. Yeah. Or the lot of them will come and draw and then go back and have the breakfast, you know. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. What, what yeah. time's the match? Uh, ten till three. Right. Just out the sunshine. It was getting a bit dark this week at three yeah. o'clock, were not it? Yeah. yeah. We can't yeah. really finish any earlier, you know. Yeah. Cool. Um, and Is then this... back to the browser. Um, for like presentation and prize giving and that. They even do the food now, don't they? Is that just for yeah. the fishermen? No, he's there all the while now. He holds the kitchen, yeah. Oh, right. So you do get hot food in the afternoons now. But he can't, they won't give him a key to the place because it's all alarmed. Right. So he can't get in in the mornings to do breakfast. Breakfast, you see. Right. Else he would do it if he yeah. could, but he won't let him in the hall, mm. you cool. know. Yeah. Like a tidy somewhere, yeah. couldn't he? Get yeah. In there. Can you imagine that? Yeah, once they get to know, because there's an ideal place for it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The best one we ever used to have was the windmill rooms. When, with Mal Fisher and that, that was when the windmill rooms were up and going. Yeah. You'd go in there, especially on this Christmas match, you'd go in there and you'd have a bamboo thing. And you, everything was in there, you know, sausages, bacon, you just went along with a plate and he served you what you wanted, doing it. Mm. And then, they'd do your Christmas dinner. As, as Joe Roberts and them used to come, they used to put the... the Set the table, they'd have crackers and party hats, and they'd finish the match and then come there and have Christmas dinner and all that. That's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And there. Brilliant. But no, they didn't not so do presentation and that there. Um, and this one, we always raise money for, I normally give £100 to the town lighting, £100 to the flail, I think, you know, marching blue. Right, yeah. And yeah. the ticket money as well. Yeah. That's oh, good. Um, you do it. You do it. Well, you do it. A lot. Not being funny, people think oh, they, you pay like four pound a peg, but the club has half on it, and the other half goes to the community. Yeah, yeah. It's that's one fantastic. way or another. Yeah. Or if there's somebody need, I mean, we helped a young girl out a few years ago with bits for a wheelchair and yeah. all that, you know, and things like that, you know. It would. I um, tell you what, non anglers, uh, people need to get um, the non anglers in the area to actually watch what she's saying yeah. and how much um, you do to promote the club. Locally, because it's amazing. Yeah, it? it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, um, there's a lot of people don't even think there's a club in March. No, but there's still a lot of people don't even think there's any fish in that river. But that's besides the point. Has there only caught anything, mate? I oh, went right. to the council 
if perhaps four or five years ago to get, you know, I'd have to have a permit. I went in and said, oh, I've come for so and so, so and so. She went, what river? She didn't even know there was a river in March. Oh. I mean, she couldn't have come from March, don't get me wrong, do you know what yeah. I mean? But she was in charge of parks and recreation. <laughs> <laughs> I've come for fishing matches, fishing matches, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's funny that way. But no, it's in touch wood, it all runs smooth. And with this weather, no, there won't be no pleasure angles about. No. Normally I do have an odd peg just in case, but yeah. I advertise it in Milvu. We put a bit on social media, you know. Most people. And the people. average angle is just, you've got one or two out there. They don't even go fishing. But they have to mention when you put something up, huh, they can't stop you, it's free fishing, we've got priority over matchmen. Well, that attitude, I think, well, if we're there for he is, we've got the priority in him, we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But you've always got them one or two, same yeah. with what's happened at Bennett on Cop Old Corner and that, you know, where we used to put 10 pegs. Oh, you can't put them there, it's free fishing, you know. Oh, and you don't want that hassle to turn up on the morning, especially a team match, and there is somebody there, because you're. Yeah. Yeah. It's like on here, if there's a team match and you've got somebody, you know. Yeah. It just, they could be awkward, you know, but why over the years, they, 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 there aren't many coming at Pleasure Fishing on a Sunday now because yeah. they know yeah. there's something so, on or they will. Or anglers that are in the know, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 You might get a few youngsters, which yeah. is always yeah. sad. And when you see a youngster yeah. on his bike, keep riding, yeah. you think, right, keep there. riding, mate. Yeah. You've got a long way yeah. to go, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Bit, but then again, that's life, isn't it? You know? yeah. mm. What other dates have you got in your diary for other matches after Christmas? Just give right, a before we start on this, I do not take any bookings really <laughs> until oh, after each match. Do you not want to give out the dates? Or... Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter because right. most of them have got them anyway. All right. Uh, isn't one? Fizz running something or other? Yeah, 15th of Jan's an open, 5th of February will be an open, then the 19th of February, which I'm taking bookings for now, so baits and tackle are what I book five or six on here are they? Because that's a team practice or bait, tackle and bait, and tackle and bait, whichever way. Uh, that's just that. a team practice that is. For all the teams what are fishing the final the week after. You know, the cold. So you'll have five, is that right? Yeah, five or six, that's it. So. Uh, but on that same day, Benick, no, I think Benick, they're, doing, they're on the doing it on the Saturday, so they yeah. come down for the weekend, you see. Is that the one that Fizz is organising? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, so, but these ones, I think like the January, the February one, they'll run one on that day because I normally sell out. Mm. And then I'll say, well, ring Fizz and they'll go on the Bennett one and 24. Oh. They've still got practice on there, haven't they? Yeah, you know? yeah. But they all want to come to March, you know. Well, it's an amazing yeah. river. It really you get is. some hammer. And then we've got the last one, which is March the 12th. Um, that don't normally get sold out, mm -hmm. but what they don't know, that's when we. Put quite a bit of money in, and I think the winner took home what did Steve have? Three know. or four. I know he had sixty he? odd pound of fish. Yeah, I don't think he was worried about how much. No, money no, he was worried really. Was he's he? sixty no. pound a run? Yeah, the money was big big. catch. Yeah. But we that match, we do put a bit of the money back into it. Yeah, you know? oh you've got this yeah. as first. Mm. Mm. That match is well, one. The trouble is, March March club is quite a well-off club, and if I died tomorrow, nobody would know a thing about it. Only my missus. Yeah. I've signed it over to her anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's right, you know. Yeah, you need it. It's, so we put a bit back into it. That's why I say that's why we want to yeah. buy these pallets. I mean, the club's got money and they would. Yeah. I'd like, well, to, see, I'd look, I'd like to see the whole lot go to something like that. Yeah. yeah. What money's in that bank when I pack up or whatever? I should like to just think, well, it's gone to a good cause. Yeah, it's, you've got you know. Yeah, promote the angling at yeah. the river and. All that, wow, jeez, all that work you've done all that time. You know, so, yeah, I'd like to see it go back into that side of it, you know. Yeah. Well, hopefully... So, um, that's the only way to get people to fish it is the access, isn't it? Yeah. That is what's killing it, you know. Hopefully the platforms will get... Well, so who... So who, babe, go right back to the beginning of the podcast then. Who's going to make the decision about these platforms? Who's the, who's the one who needs to go, right, we're doing it? Council, really. Right. Yeah, because right. it's council land a lot, yeah. isn't it, you see? But you're saying if March get the sort of rights to it March Club have more of a say will they yeah yeah. so they can say right yeah. we're going to go 10 platforms there 10 platforms yeah. there 10 platforms yeah. there yeah they won't just put them willy nearly you know no no cool no. that's good stuff oh jeez you're an absolute godsend um, you really are doing all these all these things all these anglers um, 
Guys, hope you have learned something tonight, because I always learn something when I listen to him, because mm. you are an absolute your mind of information, and the amount of effort you put in is absolutely incredible. And uh, it's nice that everyone sort of gets a heads up of what's going on. It's um, nice when you, when you do have a match, and afterwards, I mean, a lot of the locals know me, and they don't, they just know I do it. But when you get anglers from away, and they come up and say, you know, mm. thanks for running the match, yeah. or... You appreciate that. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You know, yeah. and a lot of them do, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, not be really funny locals, they just know we do it for granted, you know. And yeah, it's, it just, it's, it's just someone taking the effort, just saying thank yeah. you. It means oh, a lot yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, John Tay, a lot of them do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially when they want a food quid, you know. I think, I think everybody appreciates. I think yeah. a lot of people don't actually realise, though, what no. goes into it. Yeah. It's through no fault of their own, they're just not aware. Mm. But hopefully, by watching things like this, they can get more aware of what's going on. It's well, been amazing. Knows. I mean, that'll take me a night, one night this week to do all the peg numbers, all the envelopes, mm. you know, all the sort boards. Sort the scales. Sort the scales and out. With this everything. weather as well, it's a yeah. nightmare, people cancelling. Yeah, that's another thing. You know. Phone bill. Because then you're phoning up the reserve list. Oh, mate, there's a spot. Do you want it? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure now. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Are you yeah. coming or not? Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know. And you're like, uh. It's and then like you get no shows like, as well. Enough, one or two of them is like, Oh, put me down, put me down. I've gone on their, you know, on their chat page. You know, um, let me know if you're fishing this Saturday or not. Two of them, what I'd put down, what told me to put them down, and say, oh, well, we can't fish this week. Well, would they have told me if I hadn't told well, them? That's the problem, isn't you it? You see, and then yeah. I would have had two pegs where that waiting list, I've told people they ain't got pegs. I it? have the same with yeah. at Rookery, yeah, yeah, for the individual winter league. Every yeah. week I put, please book in. Yeah. I end up having to text 50% of them. Yeah. Are you fishing Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a mind reader. I don't yeah, know whether you it. are or not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you'll get perhaps one turn up. Well, still, I'm a local. I thought you'd put us down. Well, I want to know whether you're coming still. Don't yeah. I? Because there's yeah. hundreds of locals, yeah. you know. Yeah. All right, so I thought, so it's this Saturday. Sunday. 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 Uh, all right, so it's this Sunday. Cool. Awesome. Well, um, it's going to be cold, but I still think it's going to throw it's, it's good It's supposed to be warming up a bit by Saturday, Sunday now. I like, so, I, I'd like to see the... Uh, Pedestrians walking past those two pegs and they go, Oh, someone fishing there. Look, I've never seen anyone fish there in my life. Big different moment. Yeah. What, their hepatitis corner? Yeah. Yeah. Opposite the old mill. Yeah. Yeah. Be There's fantastic. always a rake of fish there, isn't there? Yeah. It's like, we normally. And they never the get right caught there. They probably win the match first. This time of the year. There's loads of perch there. Blinking boats loads out there. Think, the skimmers and all sorts. Yeah, because one of them will be literally fishing up under, the, under the bridge, bridge nearly. Yeah. yeah. Under them arches. Yeah. That could be quite interesting. Well, we'll see anyway if, if I need them. That is, yeah. be interesting what comes out. Right, I'm conscious of the time because we yeah. have, um, yeah, it's probably gone an hour and a half. Nah, that's cheesy, isn't it? No, nah, it's, it's you, mate. Well, it cheesy, be. cheesy, come back, you've got the sack. Right, eh? <laughs> yeah. Bob, thank you for popping that's over. That's all right. I'll make you another cup of tea in a minute, if that was all right, right your last yeah. one. Yeah. Alex, thank you as always. Any, anything else you'd like to add? No. No, just get. I'm not. I don't want to make it run any longer. <laughs> oh, don't get it like that, no. guys. Get. It's still got a few days left before Christmas. There's loads of bits and bobs we've been promoting off the last three weeks. So um, yeah, there's loads just of order it and uh, hopefully it gets out before Christmas with yeah, Royal loads, Mail. Loads of ideas. Cheesy, yeah. you're an absolute legend. Thank you very much for not everything you do for everybody who fishes around here, whatever time of year. And, Bye. Uh, People I, do know why you call me cheesy. I hope. Yeah, because well, you've got a cheesy yeah, stuff. Look, there's a few anglers out there who wouldn't know why they go. Yeah. Just tell them I'll do Ely Market, Royston Market. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a podcast on its own, isn't it? Yeah. Actually talking yeah, about that you're, you're, it. What, Is it a stall holder? Is that the correct term? Um, market trader. Market trader, yeah. So we won't delve into that now, but yeah. yeah. So you're the best sausages around. No, that's it. You do, yeah. It's Local just, made. Yeah. So I, I've been out there 50 years. Used to push a barrow up to the market from my mum when I was at school. We, when we did the audio only well, podcast, just over in the chase. I think we should get Bob back in the new year to tell <laughs> us the, the, the market trader stories because um, that's a podcast on its own. But uh, I've always said I wish I took photographs and written things down. Yeah, and I could have written a book. Yeah. Well, we're all the same, mm, isn't we? Yeah, you know the things what happened and you see. And but if you don't know why it's called cheese, that's why because he sells, sells cheese on the market. Cheese on the market, yeah. So it's uh, not. A, it's not, the, not the most. Um, it's not easy being cheesy. <laughs> well, that's it. It's not the hardest nickname ever given to him, is it? <laughs> right, I'm rattling on. We've got to go. You're a legend. Thank you, Bob. It's all right. Alex, pleasure as always. Mm -hmm. You guys were lucky yesterday, but we won't talk about it.
Pe- Peter are my new mates because they give me Ooh, carrot cake. Oh, love yeah. Simon Peter. <laughs> I see him sitting with them. Yeah. Oh, anything for free. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the video Friday because you all will be explained. And uh, it's I'm quite proud of it, particularly the first two minutes, which is very like arty farty yeah. in all the light. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed doing it, and it probably bore everybody. But give it a look, and you might you might learn something about the winter league that's coming up the final. Right, guys, we're going to go. See you all next week. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. See you later. See ya.